Paul Rubens, the beloved actor and comedian known for creating the iconic Pee Wee Herman, has passed away. With his signature high-pitched voice and quirky antics, Pee Wee Herman became a cultural phenomenon. Rubens' career spanned decades, marked by both immense success and significant controversy. From his whimsical performances to his shocking arrest and its aftermath, his life was full of dramatic twists and turns. Join us as we explore the highs and lows of Paul Rubin's intriguing journey, ending with his tragic and untimely death. What led to the downfall of this beloved entertainer? Watch till the end to find out. Paul Rubens, formerly known as Paul Rubenfeld, was born on August 27, 1952, in Peekskill, New York. His early life was enriched by a vibrant cultural environment. His parents, Judy and Milton Rubenfeld, fostered his love for diverse forms of entertainment. One of the most memorable experiences of his childhood was attending the annual Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Upon his family's relocation to Sarasota, Florida, many of his neighbors were talented performers for the renowned Ringling Brothers Circus. Paul quickly became a regular attendee of their captivating shows. These influences played a significant role in shaping his unique and endearing personality. Against his parents' initial objections, he followed his passion for entertainment, starting with backyard plays and eventually making his way to a local theater. From a young age, Rubens developed a keen interest in performance and spectacle, which would shape his lifelong fascination with showbiz. He admired the young actor Ron Howard while growing up. After high school graduation, he attended Plymouth State University for one semester before attending Boston University. Afterward, he began auditioning for acting schools. He faced rejections from several schools, including the Juilliard School and twice by Carnegie Mellon University, before being accepted to the California Institute of the Arts. Rubens moved to California, where he worked in restaurant kitchens and as a fuller brush salesman. Following his relocation to California in the 1970s, he decided to further his education in drama at the prestigious California Institute of the Arts. At this point, he started honing his performance style and refining his comedic timing. His interest in comedy eventually led him to become a member of the highly respected improvisational comedy group, The Groundlings. Within this talented collective, Pee Wee Herman emerged quickly capturing the hearts of people across the nation. During a Groundlings show, the cast portrayed various characters commonly found in a comedy club. Paul, not particularly fond of stand-up comedy, decided to portray his character as a struggling comedian who struggled to deliver jokes and come up with witty comebacks to hecklers. Pee Wee Herman didn't become a sensation overnight. Despite his iconic laugh, eccentric gray suit, and oversized red bow tie, the character underwent a gradual evolution, with Rubens meticulously honing Pee Wee through numerous performances, carefully refining the details that would eventually become the defining features of his now legendary act. In 1981, the Pee Wee Herman Show, a stage production featuring the character, received widespread critical acclaim as a result of his unwavering dedication. After achieving great success, Rubens pursued his next venture in Hollywood. He teamed up with the talented Tim Burton to bring Pee Wee to life on the big screen in 1985 with Pee Wee's Big Adventure. The film turned out to be a great success, bringing new and exciting opportunities for both Rubens and his lovable alter ego. The stage show had a successful run of five months and even had one of its performances recorded and aired as an HBO special in 1981. This film was highly successful and set the stage for the 1985 movie Pee-wee's Big Adventure and the popular show Pee-wee's Playhouse. Rubin's work had a distinctiveness that set it apart, just like his approach. At a 2016 question and answer session held at USC's Ray Stark Family Theater, Wayne White, an artist involved in the production of Pee-wee's Playhouse, expressed his gratitude towards Rubens for taking a risk on him and allowing him the freedom to fully unleash his creative potential. White mentioned that they were performing their tasks for the first time. Who would have given us a chance in Hollywood? No one. Paul was incredibly impressive. Not only was he an artist himself, 
but he also had a knack for discovering talented unknowns. The Playhouse had an incredible impact as an art project that unexpectedly made its way onto television. In the 1970s, Rubens began performing at local comedy clubs. He made 14 guest appearances on The Gong Show, four of which as part of a boy-girl act he developed with Charlotte McGuinness called the hilarious Betty and Eddie. He soon joined the Los Angeles-based improvisational comedy team, The Groundlings, and remained a troupe member for six years, working with Bob McClurg, Hartman and Rubens became friends and often wrote and worked on material together. In 1980, Rubens had a small part as a waiter in The Blues Brothers. Fast forward to a couple of years later after being rejected from Saturday Night Live, Paul believed his comedy career had come to an end. As he contemplated returning to his hometown of Sarasota, a memory resurfaced of the peculiar comedian character he once portrayed, which had gained significant popularity a few years ago. Perhaps there was something there. He borrowed money from his parents and collaborated with fellow groundlings Phil Hartman and John Paragon to bring the Pee Wee character back to life in his own stage show. They took inspiration from 1950s children's shows like Howdy Doody and transformed the character's rebellious nature into that of a timeless child, blending in elements of delight, awe, and of course, absurdity. The Pee Wee Herman show centers around the adventures of a young boy named Pee Wee, who resides in a whimsical playhouse located in Puppetland. He engages with the audience in a playful manner, treating them as if they are young viewers who have joined his show. He also interacts with cozy characters such as Terry the Pterodactyl, Captain Carl, and Miss Yvonne. The play was crafted with the intention of entertaining the Groundlings crowd by parodying a children's show. It cleverly incorporated a multitude of adult humor and subtle suggestions of a more mature nature. At the conclusion of the show, after an hour of engaging educational segments and delightful audience participation, Jombie the Genie fulfills Pee Wee's wish to fly. The grand finale is a captivating musical number during which Pee Wee joyfully declares himself to be the luckiest boy in the world. The play debuted in 1981 with midnight performances at the Groundlings Theater, captivating a somewhat perplexed yet largely enamored audience. Its avant-garde style received high praise from critics who also commended its unique set design. Paul Rubens was hailed as one of the most eccentric comedians in the industry. It gained a dedicated cult following and became immensely popular leading to a five-month sold-out run at the Roxy Theatre in Los Angeles. The show was even filmed by HBO as a comedy special, propelling Pee Wee into the mainstream. At this juncture, Paul made the decision to fully embrace the Pee Wee Herman persona, leaving behind his real name. He began making frequent appearances on TV shows and movies, becoming a regular guest on Late Night with David Letterman. Letterman once amusingly commented, what I find hilarious is that it has the appearance of a mischievous and clever child, but deep down you know it's being controlled by something sinister. With his constant presence and unique comedic style, Pee Wee Herman unexpectedly emerged as an iconic figure of absurdity during that era. This character was so beloved that Warner Brothers decided to create a full-length feature film based on it. During this period, there was a prevalent trend of creating movies centered around a single comedic character. Films that excelled in portraying comedic characters on the screen were far less prevalent. How can one transform this vibrant and passionate individual into the protagonist of a captivating 90-minute film? Paul attempted to answer that question in an office located on the Warner Brothers studio lot. It's worth noting that he had no prior experience in writing screenplays. This movie faced a challenging situation as Paul was in the middle of writing his first draft. His attention was suddenly drawn to something outside his office. Bicycles. Yes, you heard that right. It is quite common to witness employees effortlessly biking around studio backlots, swiftly making their way to their desired set or office. Paul playfully inquired about receiving his own bike from Warner Brothers, and to his delight, they surprised him with a beautifully restored 1940 Schwinn. He fell in love immediately, 
Paul decided to discard his initial draft and teamed up with collaborators Phil Hartman and Michael Varhol to embark on a fresh script centered around the theme of biking. With this new script, the search began to find a director who could capture the unique blend of Pee Wee's humor and heart. Paul attended a screening of Frankenweenie, a short film made by Disney in 1984, hosted by his friend Shelley Duvall. He was confident that the director chosen would be the ideal person to bring Pee Wee to life on the screen. Can you guess who that director was? Stay tuned for the surprising choice and how it changed everything. Warner Brothers saw the potential and took a chance by hiring a promising newcomer named Tim Burton. Burton enhanced the kitsch style and absurd humor of the Pee Wee stage show by incorporating nightmare sequences, stop motion animation, and distinctive set design into the film. These elements seamlessly complemented the world of Mr. Herman. Paul had a unique idea when it came to choosing the composer for this grand story. He wanted the frontman of his favorite band, Oingo Boingo. After attending a few concerts, Burton agreed, and rock star Danny Elfman reluctantly accepted the challenge of composing his first ever film score. It's truly a remarkable coincidence. The unique perspectives of these artists came together to create the cinematic debut of an unexpected hero. The film quickly gained a dedicated cult following, much like its beloved character Pee Wee Herman. It received praise from critics and remained in the top three at the box office for six consecutive weeks. Although it didn't surpass its competition, a movie featuring a time-traveling DeLorean, it managed to earn an impressive $40 million with a modest $7 million budget. The story of Pee Wee's big adventure revolved around Pee Wee's journey to retrieve his stolen bike. This simple yet engaging plot captivated audiences, showcasing Ruben's comedic genius and the character's endearing quirks. The film's success marked the beginning of Tim Burton's illustrious career as one of Hollywood's most esteemed directors, a position he continues to hold today. Danny Elfman has consistently provided the musical backdrop for nearly all of Burton's films, lending his talents to over 100 Hollywood projects. Pee Wee utilized the movie's triumph to rejuvenate his original stage play into a bona fide morning kids show that appealed to audiences of all ages, Pee Wee's Playhouse. This show garnered an impressive 15 Emmys and solidified the character's status as a beloved figure in pop culture. In 1985, Pee Wee Herman had the opportunity to host his own episode of Saturday Night Live, which was a remarkable achievement considering that Paul Rubens had previously been turned down for a spot on the cast. Imagine being turned down by SNL only to host it later. Want to know more about Pee Wee's Playhouse and its impact? Keep watching. At first glance, a Pee Wee Herman movie seemed unlikely to succeed. The film was a comedy made on a limited budget, directed by a newcomer in the industry. The score was composed by a first-time movie composer, and the script was written by aspiring screenwriters. The story revolved around a character who had never experienced the spotlight of a leading role, whether on television or in a major film. However, it is interesting to note that those very aspects played a crucial role in its success. Paul Rubens crafted a story that introduced Pee Wee to a wider audience, ensuring that the humor would resonate with both fans of the stage show and newcomers alike. Paul made a bold choice by selecting talented up-and-comers as the director and composer for the project. These individuals brought their distinct styles to the table, resulting in a truly artistic and captivating story. Ruben's creation, Pee Wee Herman, was a character who resonated with some people and irritated others. Paul developed the persona to represent a comedian without insight, a man who could not understand how the world perceived him. Paul Rubin's career faced a major setback in July 1991. While visiting an adult movie theater in Sarasota, Florida, Rubens was arrested during a police raid. He was caught engaging and masturbating publicly in an adult theater, leading to charges of indecent exposure. This incident shocked fans and significantly tarnished his family-friendly image. Rubens entered a plea of no contest to the charges, and he was required to complete 75 hours of community service. Despite maintaining his innocence, the scandal resulted in the cancellation of Pee Wee's Playhouse, and CBS halted the reruns of the show.
that wasn't the end of his legal troubles. In November 2002, Rubens faced another serious accusation. He was charged with possession of child pornography, a claim his publicist vehemently denied, stating the materials were part of an extensive historical art photography collection. The district attorney eventually dropped the child pornography charges, but Rubens pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of obscenity, resulting in a three-year probation. This second arrest further complicated his public image and career, though it didn't hinder him as much as the first incident. Despite these controversies, Rubens found support from several prominent Hollywood figures, including Bill Cosby and Zsa Zsa Gabor. They argued that his actions, while inappropriate, were not harmful to others. However, public opinion remained divided, with some people questioning his character and motivations. Following his legal troubles, Paul Rubens retreated from the limelight to rebuild his career. He took on various roles, often under different names, to avoid the stigma associated with Pee Wee Herman. One of his significant comebacks was in the superhero parody film Mystery Men, 1999, where his performance received critical acclaim. Rubens showcased his versatility in voice acting, contributing to animated films like Disney's Hercules and Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. These roles demonstrated his ability to move beyond Pee Wee and explore new artistic realms. He continued to work steadily in the entertainment industry, appearing in TV shows like Reno 911 and movies like Blow 2001. In 2010, Rubens revived Pee Wee on stage with a Broadway adaptation of The Pee Wee Herman Show. This successful revival led to the release of a new Pee Wee film, Pee Wee's Big Holiday, on Netflix in 2016. This film allowed Rubens to reintroduce Pee Wee Herman to a new generation while reconnecting with longtime fans. Throughout his career, Rubens made numerous guest appearances in various TV shows and films, adding his unique touch to each role. He portrayed Rick, a member of the Citizens Patrol, on the well-known Comedy Central series Reno 911. This role led to a minor part in the 2007 film Reno 911, Miami. In 2006, he appeared in the music video for the raconteur's song, Steady As She Goes, playing the mischievous antagonist. In 2007, Rubens attended a tribute event at the SF Sketchfest, where he engaged in a discussion about his career. He also signed a deal with NBC to create a pilot for a sitcom called Area 57, revolving around a passive-aggressive alien. Unfortunately, the show did not get picked up for the 2007 to 2008 season. Rubens also made a memorable appearance on the popular NBC series 30 Rock, portraying an inbred Austrian prince. This unique character was created specifically for him by Tina Fey. Additionally, he had three guest appearances on FX's series Dirt, playing the character of Chuck LaFoon, a washed-up alcoholic reporter. In the last years of his life, Paul Rubens continued to work on various projects. According to Variety, Rubens had two exciting Pee Wee Herman projects in progress at the time of his passing, The Pee Wee Herman Story and Pee Wee's Playhouse, The Movie. The last film he directed was Pee Wee's Big Holiday, which was released on Netflix in 2016. Rubens faced significant health challenges battling myogenous leukemia and metastatic lung cancer. Despite his illness, he continued to work and create, maintaining his trademark tenacity and wit. On July 30th, 2023, Paul Rubens passed away from acute hypoxic respiratory failure at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. An official statement posted on his social media accounts read in part, Paul bravely and privately fought cancer for years with his trademark tenacity and wit. A gifted and prolific talent, he will forever live in the comedy pantheon and in our hearts as a treasured friend and man of remarkable character and generosity of spirit. In a post signed by Rubens, he wrote, Please accept my apology for not going public with what I've been facing for the last six years. I have always felt a huge amount of love and respect from my friends, fans, and supporters. I have loved you all so much and enjoyed making art for you. Rubens' passing deeply saddened his fans, 
who now reflect on his life and cherish the wonderful memories of his work. Many celebrities expressed their grief, a testament to the impact he had on their lives. Numerous stars had the privilege of working alongside him throughout his illustrious career. Rubin's team released a pre-written statement from him, shedding light on his choice to keep his condition confidential. Rubens expressed regret for not sharing the challenges he had been dealing with over the past six years. He conveyed his gratitude for the immense love and respect he received from his friends, fans, and supporters. Paul Rubens requested that any gestures of sympathy be directed towards Stand Up to Cancer or organizations dedicated to the care, support, and research of dementia and Alzheimer's. His passing has deeply saddened his fans, who now reflect on his life and cherish the wonderful memories of his work. Rubin's legacy lives on through the enduring popularity of Pee Wee Herman and his contributions to comedy and entertainment. He remains a cherished figure, remembered for his remarkable talent, generosity, and unwavering dedication to his art.